Today we're going to make this quick and easy DIY fall door swag using the five gallon paint stir stick method. Welcome to Stillwater's Wreath Designs. Come on in. Today we're going to make something brand new on the channel, friends. We are going to make a fall door swag using a five gallon paint stir stick. You can actually buy these in bulk from Amazon. They come in a package of 10. For those of you that are new to the channel, welcome, welcome. We're so happy to have you. Stillwater's Wreath Designs is all about wreath and door swag step-by-step -step tutorials on a budget. We upload new tutorials every single week, so I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and create with us. And for all of my returning friends, of course, I'm always so happy that you're back here with me. Thank you for spending time with me once again. All right, let's dive in. Before we start talking through our supplies, go ahead and plug in your hot glue gun so that can be heating up. I'll leave a full materials and tools list for you below in the description of this video so that you can recreate it if you'd like to do so. I'll also be posting this exact door swag in my Etsy shop. If you'd like to just purchase it directly, I'll leave a link for that for you below as well. So these five gallon stir sticks, friends, they are 17 inches in length and about an inch wide. And they've got a little indent here, um, which is intended for the stirring, but it makes for a great spot to add a hanger. So we're gonna lay this down here and we'll go ahead and add some pipe cleaners. That's our very first step. These are just standard 12 inch pipe cleaners. And so I'm just going to Take my 12 inch pipe cleaner and make a loop in the center. It kind of looks like an elongated awareness ribbon. And I'm going to give it two or three twists, like so. And then I'm going to wrap it right around where this indention is. This will essentially be the back side. And so I'm just going to give that several tight twists like so. And then I'll use my small snips here to trim off the excess bit of those pipe cleaners and push those down so that they're flush. So now that we've added our hanging pipe cleaner, let's go ahead and add our pipe cleaners onto the stir stick, which is how we'll be securing down our deco mesh. And so we're going to take two pipe cleaners at the top and I'm just going to run that underneath so that they're essentially the same length and I'm going to give it a couple of twists and then point those guys off to the side. We're going to add our second pipe cleaner in the exact same spot giving it a side twist on the opposite side. So it looks something like this. We're going to come down to the bottom of our stir stick and do that same thing. You're just going to want to come up about an inch to an inch and a half. And again, we'll be adding two. Pointing one off to one side and one off to the other. And you want those pipe cleaners laying right next to one another. And we're gonna do that same thing in the middle. You're welcome to measure your stir stick if you'd like. I'm just gonna eyeball it. And again, adding two side by side. One set pointing in one direction and one in the other. So it looks something like this. And then in between each set of two, we're going to add a single pipe cleaner right in the middle of those two. And again, I'm just eyeballing it, not looking for perfection. Give it a couple of tight twists and point those guys straight up. And we'll add one more to the next section. Again, just a single pipe cleaner 
pointing straight up. So essentially we've added nine total pipe cleaners to this paint stir stick. We've added three sets of two for our deco mesh holders. We've added two singles and then on the back side we've added one as a hook. Once you've got those guys secured down, go ahead and take some hot glue and run a couple of beads over every single spot where the front pipe cleaners meet. And that just keeps it from shifting. Doesn't need to be pretty guys, nobody's gonna see it. Once you've got your dollops of glue at all those connecting points, go ahead and sit your paint stir stick off to the side and we'll prep our deco mesh. You'll either want to grab a good pair of scissors and your ruler or tape measure, or in my case, I'll be using my self-healing mat and my rotary cutter. Friends, if you are new to wreath making or door swag making and you've not yet seen a rotary cutter, it's basically um, one of the first tools I would recommend that you add to your wreath making toolbox. And basically it works just like a pizza cutter and it will allow you to cut your deco mesh quickly with nice clean lines. I'll leave a link for this for you below. So for this door swag, we're going to use three different types of 10 inch deco mesh. We've got a solid metallic orange, a burlap, and a solid black. And we've got eight pipe cleaners that we'll be adding deco mesh into. And we're going to add a burlap piece to every single set of ties. So we're going to need eight cuts of the burlap. Let's start with that. And we're going to measure our pieces at 20 inches in length. So with your rotary cutter or your scissors, go ahead and cut out eight 20 inch pieces of your burlap. Now we're going to cut four 20 inch pieces of the orange and four 20 inch pieces of the black. Once you've cut all of your deco mesh pieces, go ahead and grab your paint stir stick and bring it back to your work area. So our next step is to add our deco mesh pieces into each of our ties here on our paint stir stick. And we're going to add two cruffles to every single set of ties. We're going to add the burlap color to every set of ties, and then we're gonna alternate back and forth between the orange and the black. So to make a cruffle, also known as a woodland ruffle, you're going to grab your piece of deco mesh and lay it in your workstation, curl side up. And this is a great technique to use for deco mesh because uh, if you're new to working with deco mesh, you'll soon, soon learn that deco mesh loves to fray. So anything that we can do as creators to help prevent that fray is always ideal. And the cruffle method or the woodland ruffle method tucks away those raw edges to really help prevent exposure and the fray. And so all you're going to do is on one side, let me just add a little weight here, on one side of your piece of deco mesh, again, it's curl side up, you're just gonna curl in that end a couple of times, creating this little tube which tucks away your raw edge. And then uh, to keep things simple, I like to use a chip clip or a clothespin. They just came in a 10 pack from the Dollar Tree. Hold that curl together. Flip your piece of deco mesh around and do the exact same thing at the other end, just a couple of curls. And then you're going to ruffle the rest of your mesh. And to do so, you're gonna use your thumbs as the stationary placeholders. And then with your eight fingers, just crawl that mesh back into your thumbs, all the way to the end of your piece. Remove that clip, and you've just created your first woodland ruffle or cruffle. And so what that really means, friends, you've got a curl on each end and then the ruffle in the middle. We're gonna come into our paint stir stick and we will just add that cruffle right into our first set of pipe cleaner ties all the way down to the base and give it a couple of tight, tight twists. So we've added our 
burlap cruffle and now I'm just going to grab orange just because it was closest to me but remember we're going to add two cruffles to every single set of ties so I'm going to curl that end in a couple of times and hold it with my clip remember my mesh was curl side up doing the same thing at the opposite end and crawling that mesh into my fingers I've just made my second cruffle and since the first cruffle the curls were going in one direction for the second cruffle we're gonna have them go in the opposite direction so one time we'll lay it like this and then like this almost like a plus sign and again all the way down to the base give it a couple of tight tight twists and point those guys right back up. Now we'll jump over to the other side. So I'm grabbing a piece of my burlap. I'm gonna curl the end in here a couple of times and hold it with my clip. Spin my piece of mesh around and do the same thing to the opposite end. And making my cruffle. I'll come back to my paint stir stick and come over here to the opposite side placing that cruffle all the way down to the base right there in the middle and giving it a couple of tight tight twists now since we used orange last time this time I'll use black so basically we'll be alternating between the black and orange. Just to give us a nice variety. And I'm gonna add that right on top. Of our burlap mesh all the way down to the base. I'm going to give it two or three tight, tight twists and I'll fluff out my, my cruffle. So we're going to repeat the same pattern, friends, all the way up our paint stir stick. And so I'm going to kind of alternate back and forth. So, so for the lower set of two, I've got orange and black. So on my next set of two, I'll probably do black and orange and then back to orange and black just so for some variation. So go ahead and add one burlap cruffle and one alternating of the black and orange cruffle to every single set of ties and I'll meet you back here. All right, now we've got our paint stir stick fully loaded with our deco mesh. So you should have two woodland ruffles or cruffles added into each set of pipe cleaner ties. And at this point, friends, now that we've added in all of our deco mesh, it is measuring about 24 inches in length and 12 inches in width, probably every bit of eight to 10 inches in depth. Look how stinking cute that is. And this is what it looks like from the back. So adorable. And so now what we're going to do is make a cute bow to add to our very center of our swag. So I'm gonna set my swag off to the side and I've grabbed two 12 inch pipe cleaners and I'm gonna actually marry those together, friends, so that they are longer because our swag has such depth to it. And so to elongate your two pipe cleaners, you're just gonna make an X with about an inch or so of each of those pipe cleaners at the top. And then starting at one side, you're just going to twist, 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 like so, until you reach the end. And then you'll do the exact same thing with that other side. Perfect. And so we've just made a 22 inch length pipe cleaner, which I feel like um, will be better for our swag. And now we're just going to use a few different types of wired ribbon. And really, guys, you can use any ribbon you'd like as long as it matches and coordinates well with your swag. My personal preference is that I 
um, usually mix up a two and a half inch with ribbon with a couple of one and a half inch ribbons. You can certainly, um, you know, tweak that and do it as you wish. I just recommend that you always, always use a wired ribbon. So that your bit bow will shape the way that you want it to and it's not floppy. So this ribbon, I'm not sure if you can see, but it's got a really cute fuzzy orange edging and then those really cute different textured pumpkins. And so I'm going to measure eight inch tails just using my self-healing mat for measurements. You can also use your ruler. So I've identified eight inches and I'm going to pinch that together in my hand. Give that a twist. I'm going to measure eight inches again. That'll give me a four inch loop. So once you've identified eight inches, just bring that down into your hand. Pinch and gather. Give it a twist. We're going to measure eight inches again. Bring that back into your hand. Like so. And then I'm going to measure that tail at eight inches and cut it off. And I'm just being approximate here, friends. Nobody's going to be measuring your tails. I promise you that. And now I'm going to repeat the same thing, but with my loops going the opposite direction. So I'm going to measure out an eight inch tail, pinch that and place that in my hand. This time my tail's going the opposite direction. I'm going to give that a pin twist. So it's going to be pretty side out. Identify that eight inch mark and fold it in. Like so. I'm going to give that a twist. Measure out eight inches again. And make my last loop. One more tail coming out at eight inches, approximately. And I'll trim that guy off. So basically we've got four tails and four loops. My left hand will be my holding hand and my right hand will continue to be my working hand. And now I'm gonna do the black and white one and a half inch chevron and this time I'm going to make six inch tails. I'll place that in my hand, give that a twist. I'll make six inch measurements for three inch loops. Give that a twist. Measure it out again. Sorry guys, I know it's sloppy looking here, but the process will work. I'm gonna measure out my tail again to approximately six inches. Cut that off. So for this ribbon, guys, I've got just two loops and two tails instead of four and four. And now I'm gonna repeat the same process with my last ribbon, two loops, two tails at six inches. So a six inch tail, pinching that together, giving that a twist, measuring it out to six inches, folding that guy in. Giving it a twist. And for this one, I'm just gonna eyeball guys. I'll pull those loops up to make sure they're the same length, and they are. And I'll cut that off. So now I've got this big old bow stack in my hand. I'm gonna take my pipe cleaner, kind of make it into a loose V. And I'm gonna wrap that guy right around this ribbon stack. And give it several 
tight, tight twists, like so. Now, the thing about bows, guys, look how messy that is. Bows are not pretty when you first make them. They just aren't. So don't panic, because we're gonna fix that. The next thing we need to do is dovetail all of our ribbon tail ends. And to make a dovetail, you're going to fold that ribbon over onto itself, grab your scissors and come down on the folded side, not the open side, about an inch to an inch and a quarter, and cut up diagonally, like so. And then when you open it, you've got that nice, pretty dovetail. So let's go ahead and dovetail all of our ribbon tails. All right, now we've got all of our tails trimmed out. And again, it looks like a hot mess, guys. That's okay, we're gonna fix that. So just making sure your tails are pretty side up. Let's add this guy into our swag. And I basically want this to be right in the middle. You could place it at the top if you wanted to. But I'd like to place mine right in the middle. And so the first thing I wanna do is the middle set of pipe cleaners. I'm gonna trim those guys off. I'm not gonna trim off any others because I'm not sure if we're gonna be adding any more in. But since we're doing a bow in the center, let's just go ahead and get rid of these guys. Just trim those guys off and toss them away. And if you need help finding that center set, friends, just flip it over where you can easily identify and that will also show you your center point. And then, we're going to, my finger is marking the back so I can kind of find that with my hand. I'm just gonna weave these pipe cleaners, one round each side. Now you want it to be nice and taut, but you don't wanna pull it so tightly that your bow is, you know, recessed down in. So now that I've identified it, I'm just gonna give it a single loose twist to make sure I didn't recede that in too far. And I didn't, and now that I'm happy with that, I'll go ahead and give it a couple, two or three secure, not necessarily tight twists. And then I'm gonna cut off the excess bit of my pipe cleaner. I'll point those ends inward, and now I'm gonna take my hot glue gun and just give that two or three squeezes to really secure that guy down. And now we'll have to give it a couple of minutes to dry. All right guys, our glue is nice and dry, so let's go ahead and fluff out our bow a little bit. And basically, remember that two and a half inch, we've got four loops and four tails. So you're gonna want those loops and tails kind of going in an X pattern from one another. And to open my loops, I just place my hands in there and kind of stretch them out a little bit. Go ahead and jerk on your loops as you need to. You don't need to be super delicate. So I'm gonna just start at the bottom. Open up those loops. Make sure those tails are also going in a nice X. Like so. And then I'll move up to that next layer with our one and a half inch. And remember, we only made two loops of each. So we're going to have our orange going in one direction in the black and white chevron in the other. Open those loops up with our hands. And just work on those tails. You can give your tails some curve by placing them between your two fingers, pulling them up and over and that's gonna just give them a cute little bump. Just like that. How stinking adorable. We're gonna add a few more ribbon tails into our swag friends. We're only going to use the two one and a half inch ribbon ties. So I want you to cut four pieces of each of the ribbon types at 14 inches in length. So let me show you a quick way to measure here, friends. I just find that 14 inch mark, like so. 
and then I'm going to fold it over accordion style the number of times for the pieces that I need in this case four so there's two three and four go ahead and cut your ribbon off and so now you've got this accordion style folded ribbon and then fold that guy over. We're gonna dovetail those ends just like we did before. Come down about an inch to an inch and a quarter. Cut up diagonally. We've just separated those ends and dovetailed them all at the same time. Flip that ribbon stack over. Make sure your ends are married up nicely and do that same thing. Just like so. And now what we've done here, guys, we've just measured, cut to separate, and dovetailed all in one motion. Great time saver. Let's do the same thing for the black and white chevron. We need four pieces at 14 inches in length. We're going to add two sets of ribbon tails to the bottom of our swag and two towards the top. So what I want you to do, guys, is take one of each of your ribbon types, make a loose X with them, and then kind of pinch and crawl them in the middle so they look something like this, and then kind of pull them down over your thumb so they're sort of going all in one direction. Come over to your swag and the bottom set of ties, we're going to add one set of tails to each of those pipe cleaners. So place them all the way down to the center. Give those pipe cleaners three or four tight, tight twists. Then trim off your excess bit of pipe cleaner because you won't need those anymore. And then I just take my fingers and kind of curl them back and out of the way. And I'm gonna fluff out those ribbon tails like so. And then we'll do the same thing to the other side. So I'm grabbing one of each ribbon type, making a loose X, like so. I'm gonna scrunch and gather that guy in the middle, give it a pinch, kind of pull all those tails down, and then I'm gonna add them right next to the last set of tails we added in. Placing them down into that pipe cleaner all the way to that base, Give those pipe cleaner ends three or four tight, tight twists. Then trim off that excess bit of pipe cleaner. Curl those ends back and under with your fingers and fluff out those tails. And again, if you run your fingers up and over, it's going to give them a cute little curly bump, just like so. Now I'm going to flip over my swag and we're going to do the same thing to those top two. How stinking cute is this coming along, guys? Adorable, adorable. All right, let's add some embellishments into this cutie. I've grabbed two candy corn picks. These are actually from the Dollar Tree. We'll add one to the top of our swag and one at the bottom. I'll be honest with you guys, I'm not generally fond of Dollar Tree picks. However, I thought these were really cute. Now, because they're Dollar Tree, I want to make sure they're secure, so I'm just going to pull on each of those candy corn pieces and make sure they're on there nice and securely. They are on a wire base, so you can spread them out as you wish. And I'm just pulling them apart a little bit just to give them some depth, like so. And I'm going to trim off the stem. We don't need it. It's probably six inches long. We don't need it that long. I'd say two inches is plenty or three. I'm going to add this guy. We're going to add it pretty close to the bottom. Kind of nestled between those two ribbon tail stacks, but up just a tad. I've curved this just a little bit so it lays as I want it to. And I'm just going to run 
about an inch and a half bead of glue right there on that pick and push that guy right in there like so. And then I'm gonna flip this guy around and we're gonna do the same thing at the top. So I'm gonna trim down my stem. We don't need that guy crazy long. And we'll do the same thing here at the top. Again, just running about an inch and a half or inch and a quarter bead of glue and nestling that candy corn pick right down in there. Just make sure it's got something to grab a hold of. Oh my goodness, you guys, this thing is so stinking cute. So while those are anchoring down, go ahead and grab your small snips and kind of just work your way through your swag and trim off any of those excess cleaners and discard them. We're gonna add a couple of these cute little foam pumpkins into our swag as well. These came in bulk from Hobby Lobby, but you can grab them from nearly anywhere. And we're going to turn them into a pick. Guys, they actually come in a bag, just a mesh bag like this with a variety of different sizes and shapes. But let me show you a little pro tip. Anytime you're working with florals, and most florals come on a nice wire stem, guys, I always keep two or three leftover wire bases specifically for making my own picks. And so what you need to do is just trim off three to four inches like so. Identify where you want to add your embellishment. In our case, we're gonna add that guy right there. And then based on the angle, take your wire stem bit, poke that guy right into your embellishment Pull it right out, add a little pea-sized dollop of glue, and then poke your wire back in. That'll just help hold it in place, like so. So you want it inside the piece, a good inch or so, and then you want a good inch or two, depending on the depth, available to go down into your base. I add a little bit more hot glue, and then you can press that guy right down in. Hold it for about 20 seconds or so, just give it a time to grab. And then we're gonna add one more up here at the top, following that same pro tip method. So I've cut this one a little bit smaller because our pumpkin is smaller. And I want it to sit off to an angle like so. And so I'm gonna push it into my pumpkin at an angle, pull it back out, add a pea size amount of glue, and then press that wire bit right back in there. Be careful of that glue, it's hot. I add a little bit more glue right around that base, and of course a little bead on that wire pick that we've just made, and then nestle that guy right down in. And again, hold it for about 30 seconds or so to give it a good amount of grab time. All right, and last but not least, I've got one extra candy corn pick. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and just trim those guys right off of that pick, leaving about an inch of that stem. And we're just gonna nestle them into our swag. So I think I'm gonna add one extra candy corn to each of the stems at the top and the bottom and one in the center. So just running a bit of glue right on that stem and a little dollop onto the actual piece of candy corn to anchor this guy down. like so. Oh my goodness, how stinking cute, you guys. I'm going to bend this stem a little bit 
like so. It's almost at a 90 degree angle. And then I'm gonna run some glue right on that stem and about a dime size amount on the back of that candy corn. I'm gonna press that right down into the center of our big bow and this swag is finished, you guys. How stinking cute did this turn out? I hope you enjoyed creating with me today. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. It helps my little channel to grow. And of course, the full materials list as well as the Etsy link for this particular creation can be found in the description. Thanks, friends. Happy crafting.